This is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to this supplemental to our top three podcast for the week of February 10th, 2020. Tuesday evening, we participated in an event sponsored by Alaska Common Ground, entitled From Conflict to Compromise, Four Debates on Fiscal Options. The topics were making substantial additional budget cuts, relying even more on permanent fund earnings, reinstating broad-based taxes, and raising oil taxes. Each debate featured a proponent and opponent. We spoke as the proponent of reinstating broad-based taxes. Each side had five minutes to argue their case, followed by a question. The following is our presentation and following question. We will include a link to the full debate, including the opening introduction by organizers Cliff Grow and Drew Kaysen, and the presentations by all eight participants on all issues when we post this supplemental podcast. And now, let's join the discussion. So I'd now like to welcome Brad Keithley to lead us off um, on the reinstatement of broad-based taxes and open up the back half. Thank you. Um, I want to commend Cliff or Drew or whoever put, put this order together because I think it's a very logical order in how we're addressing the issues, uh, particularly when we come from PFD cuts to uh, broad-based taxes. The, the current 10-year plan, as, you, as you've heard and as you've seen graphs, the current 10-year plan uh, the 10-year forward look uh, projects an average of, on the chart, uh, they had legislative finance at 1.5. For some reason, the governor's uh, Office of Management and Budget uh, projects a $1.8 billion uh, annual deficit uh, over the next decade. That is staggering. To put that in context, last year, after all of the battles we went through, after all of the fights we went through, uh, about budget cuts, we cut less, than, than after the supplemental, we will have cut less than $100 million. That's what we did last year. We're facing 1.8 billion, 1.5 or $1.8 billion in deficits every year uh, over the next 10 years, average over the next 10 years. That's 35% of spending. If you take spending at current levels, plus inflation, the, the great inflation cap that everybody talks about, we're gonna cap spending at inflation, if you take uh, spending at current levels uh, plus inflation, the deficit is 35% of, of that spending level. $1.8 billion is 35% of, uh, percent of that spending level. Um, and it's just, it's a staggering number. The question to me, and the question I think to a lot of people is who pays? Who's going to pay to close that gap? Uh, over the last four years, five years, we've used PFD cuts to close that gap. And as you heard Rick explain, that is the most regressive approach you possibly can take. The chart on the right is from a 2017 study done for House Finance by the Institute of Taxation and Economic Policy, uh, a DC think tank. And it looked at the impact by in income bracket of PFD cuts. We start on the far right with the top 1%. PFD cuts, uh, and these are PFD cuts of 780 four dollars per person that that's intended to raise 500 million dollars of revenue if you look at the far right the top one percent that's 0.2 percent of their income the next bracket over is the next four percent the combined uh, the combined of those two is point is the top five top five percent it's 0.6 percent of their income the next 15 percent it's 1.1 percent of their income the fourth, the uh, 20%, which is the middle income bracket, or the, 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 the 60 to 80 income bracket, is 1.6% of their income. The middle 20% is 2.5. The, the uh, next to bottom uh, 20% is 3.4% of their income. And this is just $784. And the bottom 20% is 7.2% of their income. These are effective tax rates, if you will of the effect of the of the of, of PFD cuts. And they're skewed hugely to middle and lower income Alaska families. They don't touch the top 20% hardly at all. So the question, the question really is we have these staggering deficits, who's going to pay? PFD cuts have the largest adverse impact. Doing it through PFD cuts have the largest adverse impact. Let me read something from the 2017 study. Reductions in the PFD are steeply regressive, having a far larger impact on families with lower incomes. A, 
cut to the P, a $784 cut to the PFD payout could free up approximately $500 million for Alaska's budget, but that gain would come at a high cost to Alaska's most vulnerable residents. Low-income families would expect to see their incomes cut by 7.2%, while middle-income families would amount to 2.5%, and high-income families would see impacts well below 1%. The impact of the bot on the bottom 20% of earners at 7.2% of income is nearly 10 times as large as the income faced by the top 20%. ICER did a study in 2016 about the impact of the PFD cut, and this was their conclusion. The impact of the PFD cut falls almost exclusively on residents and is highly regressive, so it has the largest adverse impact on the economy per dollar of revenues raised and is by far the costliest measure for Alaska families. There are better ways to raise revenue. There, there are more equitable, equitable and less adverse impact, uh, economic adverse impact on the Alaska economy. Sales taxes, income taxes, all have a much flatter impact across all Alaskans contribute. Doing it the way we've been doing it through PFD cuts results and my time was going off, but also results in having the largest adverse impact on the most vulnerable middle and lower income Alaska families. We can do better. I've got a couple of questions here. Uh, for Brad, uh, are you at all concerned about Alaska losing its sort of tax-free status? Do you see any unique benefits associated with being the only state in the union that doesn't have broad-based taxes? And do you think there's sort of any economic impacts separate just from the, uh, the imposition of the tax of sort of losing our, our, our lone wolf uh, status as the one state you can go and not pay uh, any income taxes or state sales taxes or anything like that? No, it's the reverse. We, we've, seen, we've seen the cost to Alaska of not having broad-based taxes and not having all Alaskans participating in government. And that cost is we're staring $1.8 billion uh, of deficits uh, in the face per year over the next 10 years. Uh, we need to get Alaskans engaged, all Alaskans engaged. Part of the problem with using PFD cuts is the top 20% aren't engaged. They don't care. It's not a significant share of their income. They're not, they're not concerned about budget cuts. They're not concerned about, about going in and finding efficiencies because they're not paying for it. So we, I, a broad-based tax, sales tax, income tax, engages all Alaskans in their government. We start to push back on spending. We start to push back uh, on, on policies that may uh, 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 help some segment, uh, but are not uh, justifiable <coughs> across, the, across state lines. So I think it's the reverse. I think we've lost as a result of not having a broad-based tax engaging all Alaskans in the uh, Alaska way. Well, thank you again for joining us for this supplemental edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. As we said at the top, we will include a link to the full debate on all four subjects when posting this podcast. Remember that you can find past episodes of all of our regular weekly top three podcasts on our YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify pages, and that you can keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on our regularly scheduled weekly top three. <laughs>